Hello to all of my new and my old friends. Welcome back to my channel. There has been a whole bunch of new people subscribing to my channel because Olive from A Book Olive gave me a shout out in one of her recent videos, which I am so, so, so grateful for. I actually did not know that she watched my channel. When she posted that video, it was like 10 YouTubers to watch or something like that. I was like, oh cool, like let's see some new booktubers. And so I clicked on it and I'm watching it. And then all of a sudden she mentioned me and yeah, it was just very, very kind of her. So once again, Olive, thank you so, so, so much. I will leave her channel down below. I'm sure you already follow her, but just in case, I will leave her down below. She reads a lot of nonfiction and she also reads books that I feel like aren't as popular on booktube and online, which I really appreciate because I like finding new and interesting things. And thank you to all of you that have decided to come and to stay and hang out with me. I have a pretty big book haul here. As you can see, this was very much unplanned. Most of these are used and they were either free 50 cents or one euro. So quite inexpensive. Uh, my mother was volunteering at a couple different thrift stores. They have a lot of English books there. I live in kind of a city where there's a lot of tourists. So a lot of tourists come with their money and their new books and then they read their books and they leave them. And then I take them fantastically. All of these are used except for four. I want to do a video where I talk about why I buy used books versus why I buy new books and when I tend to do each of these things. So if you would be interested in that, please let me know down below. So just wanted to introduce you guys to my new little friend. I love plants and I've recently started growing plants again. Um, and I actually found this little snippet of a plant uh, on the sidewalk. I guess it like fell from someone's balcony or I don't know, the wind snapped it off somewhere. And so it was just chilling there and I took him home and now he's in water and I hope that he will make some little roots. So this is my new little baby. First, let's talk about the new books. This here is a giveaway prize. I'm so excited. I don't think I've ever won a giveaway in anything really in my entire life. This was a giveaway that Brandon from Brandon's Bookshelf was doing. I will leave his channel down below. He does fantastic videos, kind of a lot of philosophical videos, which I really enjoy. And he has a lot of question videos in the sense that he will pose kind of a question to the general audience and then people can discuss it. And I love that because he really makes me think about why I read or how I read or just like different aspects of reading. Anyways, he had done a philosophy of reading tag and anyone that did that tag would be entered into a draw to win this book. And this girl won. Thank you, Brandon. This is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This is one of his favorite books. I have never read it. It is an annotated version, which I am very excited about because it feels a little bit intimidating. So I think with the annotations, it might be a little bit easier to grasp everything. This is also probably going to be the oldest book I've ever read. It says here, Marcus Aurelius was Emperor of Rome from 161 to 180 and a stoic philosopher. I don't even really know how to say those dates because it's just not something I ever say. This, as far as I'm aware, is about the philosophy of stoicism, which I've never really delved too much into, but hearing Brandon talk about stoicism as a whole, I feel like I resonate a lot with it, but I've come to that through different through a different realm than like stoic philosophy anyways excited to read this and i will be annotating it myself as well then we have three books that i purchased from charco press charco press is a independent publisher from the uk i honestly didn't really know much about publishing and i still really don't being on youtube and on instagram has kind of opened my eyes to different publishing houses and the books that they are publishing. Charco Press is based in the UK, but they primarily specialize in translated works from South America. I somehow came across them and then I was looking at their catalog and they had this book in there, which is Dead Girls by Selva Almada. If you watch my reading intentions uh, video that I put out, I think last month, I want to read a book from every single country in the world. Not this year, because that's a lot of countries and a lot of books, but you know, over the next couple years, I'm trying to just like make sure I check off every single country off my list because as my name suggests, I love to travel, but I know I'm never going to travel to every single country, so I can travel there in book form at least. And this was the book that I had written down for Argentina when I was just kind of researching different books and stuff. And so when I saw it at Charco Press, I was like, you know what, this is a sign. And then they had a 40% off sale, which essentially was balanced out by the duties I had to pay to <laughs> get it to Spain. But what is Dead Girls about? So Dead Girls is based in Argentina and it follows the I guess the stories and the cases of three women who were murdered whose cases are still unsolved. My understanding femicide is a big issue in Argentina right now 
and this is kind of like journalistic fiction delving into that. So yeah, it follows uh, three different women's murder cases. Next up, we have Fate by Jorge Consiglio. It's also based in Argentina and it follows a couple where one of the people in the couple starts to have an affair with somebody else and then it follows another person who is starting to date someone and I assume it's gonna talk about their histories and how everyone's lives kind of intermingle. On the back here it says, this novel focuses on a group of characters who are all in different ways endeavoring to take control of their fate. This one I mostly picked because I really like the cover. And then lastly, I'm not even going to try and explain this one. I'm just going to read the back. But this is The Rooftop by Fernanda Trias. The back of this sounds very, very interesting to me. The world is this house, says Clara, barricading herself inside a crumbling apartment with her father, baby daughter Floor, and an ailing canary. Outside, she is convinced everyone is conspiring against them. But is she protecting her family or holding them hostage? And does the rooftop offer a last sliver of freedom? Dot, dot, dot question mark. Who knows? This sounds really good. Okay, let's get on to all of the secondhand books that I found. Some of these I know what they're about. Some of them I've kind of just been like hearing about and I found them so I bought them because they were cheap. Let's get into it. If you have any recommendations on what you think I should read first or if you've liked any of these books, read any of these books, hated any of these books, let me know down below. I would love to know your thoughts so I can kind of prioritize my TBR because my TBR is getting a little bit out of control. First up, oh my god, I found two complete series which I was so excited about. I found the entire Hunger Games trilogy in these covers, which these are my favorite of the covers for the Hunger Games. I read these when they were coming out and then I reread them a couple years later and I really really enjoyed them. From what I recall, because this was 10 years ago, if not longer, no, maybe around 10 years ago, right? When did these books come out? Okay, 2008 was when the first Hunger Games book came out, so a bit more than 10 years ago, closer to 15. Time flies. From what I remember, I liked the first one, The Hunger Games. I really liked Catching Fire, and then Mockingjay was all right for me. I was one of those people that was a huge fan of kind of dystopian YA fiction. I still am, even as these things seem to have more and more cultural relevance to the days that we live in literally day by day. I would like to maybe do a reading vlog for rereading these. I tried to film a vlog for Valentine's Day. I read a bunch of romance books and I just hated the footage. I don't know if I'm good at vlogging, but I will try again. So let me know if you would like to see a vlog of me rereading The Hunger Games or alternatively, we also have this trilogy. This is the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. I read these when I was very, very young. I don't remember too much about them. There is Lyra, I believe her name was. Lyra and she is in the Arctic and she's going on some sort of journey. As you know, I am trying to read a little bit more fantasy and I feel like because this is more kind of middle grade, it might be easier for me to read like a real sort of fantasy world, but it's not like high fantasy like Lord of the Rings, for instance. If you have read these before, let me know what you thought of them. I do remember liking them, but I honestly remember nothing about the story. These came out in 1995, so I was probably reading them in like 1998. <laughs> My next stack of books. We have a very assorted section of books here. You're gonna see how eclectic my reading is because I really do read, try to read, and I do enjoy most genres. Like I said, fantasy, sci-fi, although sci-fi, I've really only read one sci-fi book, which was The Martian, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I think maybe I'm just telling myself I don't like sci-fi. And I do read books that have fantasy elements in them, but not kind of high fantasy, and I do enjoy those. So maybe I just am not a very picky reader. I don't know. Anyways, first up, we have Us by David Nichols. I picked this up for two reasons. I was trying to film a Valentine's Day vlog, which did not work out and I have not read this yet, but that's the first reason. And the second reason is One Day by David Nichols was the only romance book I ever loved before this kind of last year when I started reading a bit more romance. This book, One Day, was so good. I cried, I loved it, I reread it fantastic piece of fiction. And so when I saw he had this book, I was like, okay, well, let's get it. And this is about a married couple who have been together for I think around 20 years and their marriage is starting to fall apart. So the husband plans a trip for him and his wife to go to Europe to kind of rekindle their love. And I guess we'll find out if it works. Then we have this book, which I picked up because Notes by Alex has talked about this book before and it's always just kind of stuck in my head from watching his review. And this is Cormac McCarthy's The Road. This feels kind of like a cowboy post-apocalyptic 
book. I don't really remember his review of it because I think it was like last summer or something like that and my memory is just not that great. But on the back of here, it seems like there is a father and a son who are kind of walking through America. America is no more. And so they just have themselves some supplies and they're you know trying to fight off other people. It makes me laugh though that this is the copy that I was able to find because Alex hates movie covers, as do I. And this is definitely a movie cover, but I kind of actually like this cover. I don't know, I haven't read the book, but I feel like it fits the vibe of it. And I just, I think it's beautiful. This might be one of the few movie covers that I actually like. On to an internet classic. This is the secret. Ooh, this is the secret history by Donna Tart. I hear really mixed reviews about this. Some people say it is fantastic and instant classic, and some people have a lot of criticisms of this book. I saw it once again. I think it was maybe fifty cents, so I decided to pick it up. All I really know about this book is that it is a bunch of like rich elite Americans out of college, and then there is a murder, which I don't know if they committed or they're trying to cover it up. Don't really know what happens there, but. I'm excited to read this book and kind of see if I also like it or if I'm critical of it or if I follow in between. It is a chunker though. It is 660 pages. So it's gonna take me a while to get through. But I actually, as an aside, I really like thick books that are kind of in this like small paperback format. I don't know why, but it just feels easier to read for me versus like a big book that is very thick. Anyways, can we talk about what perfect condition this is in? The spine isn't even broken. Did this person even read this book? Some people are very kind to their books and I applaud them for that because I am definitely not. This is Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I have read a couple other books by her before. Uh, we Should All Be Feminists, Americana. Americana was amazing. It really, <laughs> that book impacted me a lot. This one, I don't believe I've read. And uh, this is based in Nigeria and Kambili is our main character. She comes from a rich family and then there's a military coup in Nigeria and her father sends her off to be with her aunt. And while she is off with her aunt, she discovers life and love and some deep family secrets. Just, I'm still amazed. There's like one little scratch here, I guess, and the rest of it is just perfect condition, which to me doesn't matter. Like I, I like books that are beat up, but it's just amazing to me that this is from a thrift store for 50 cents maybe, and it's in pristine condition. This is As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. I have never read anything by Faulkner. I watched one review from, I believe Fiction-esque, where she talked about William Faulkner, and then the algorithm just started bombarding me with Faulkner stuff. And when I saw this, I was like, okay, whatever. And I actually got this book for free because <laughs> the, the lady was like, oh, it's so old, just take it. And I was like, all right. This book is told from the perspective of a couple different people. It is based in Jefferson, Mississippi, and it talks about the death and burial of Addie Bundren. And so different uh, members of her family are talking about her death, I suppose. And then I think kind of talking about her relationship to other people, family relationships, her relationship to the place that she's living in. We will see how it goes. This feels like it's definitely out of my comfort zone. I am very excited for this book. This might be one of the next books that I read. This is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I remember this book being quite popular a few years ago. I don't remember when it came out. 2017, yeah, 2017. And I just think this book sounds very great. Eleanor Oliphant has like a very simple life. She goes to work every single day. She wears the same clothes, eats the same food every single day. And she feels as if though she is happy and completely fine until she isn't. I am definitely someone who struggles between loving the simplicity and the the calmness, I guess, of having a routine versus just wanting chaoticness in my life. I'm curious how I will feel about this book. We have White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I talked about this in my Blackathon 2022, uh, not wrap up, TBR, TBR. This is one of the books that I'm gonna be reading for that. I have not started it yet, but I am almost finished two other books, so this will be probably started tomorrow, maybe. Uh, I've never read anything by Zadie Smith before, and I love this book. I just think it's so colorful. I love colorful books. From my understanding, this book follows the life of two men who fought uh, in the war together, and then they came back to Britain, they get married, they have families, and then it follows their friendship as well as the family relationships between them. I'm curious if I will like Zadie Smith's writing, because I feel like she's fairly popular, but yeah, this is my first Zadie Smith. I am excited about all of these books, all of, this pile here, but this is one that I am very excited about for a different reason. This is Bram Stoker's Dracula. This was not on my radar at all. However, anytime I see books with this um, in these editions, I try to see what they are in case I would be interested in them because I like to sometimes have more than one <laughs> of the same kind of book. The reason that I am so excited about this is because it is annotated <laughs> and I 
love buying used books that have annotations or drawings or anything like that in it already. There's even tabs that have extra writing on them. I'm very excited. It does sound kind of like this was read for school because I did flip through this quickly and you know, they were circling adverb and this kind of stuff. Some pages are very annotated and some are very blank. I actually didn't really know what this book was even about, but I just bought it because I saw the annotations, but I'll just read you the, the top line. When Jonathan Harker visits Transylvania to help Count Dracula purchase a London house, he makes horrifying discoveries in his client's castle. What? Anyways, I am very excited to read this and then to add my own annotations into this person's annotations as well. Also their name, the person who owned this book, their name is on the inside flap. I'm not gonna read that to you. I don't think it would really change anything, but I won't. But anyways, it just, it feels so special. I love that so much. And lastly, we have three Stephen Kings. I had asked my mom if she saw any Stephen Kings to let me know because I didn't want to, you know, give her like tons of different authors to look out for. She has a job to do, but I felt Stephen King was kind of an easy author to generally want books from. I would like to read all of his books one day. It will take a while because he has a very big catalog. A lot of his books are very chunky. They are chunky monkeys. So the three books that I was able to find from Stephen King uh, the first one is The Dark Tower Volume 1, which is The Gunslinger. I honestly know absolutely nothing about the Dark Tower series. I read a lot of Stephen King, but I'm not someone who is really invested or knows too much about the Stephen King universe. So I'm actually not going to look at even what this is really about. I do want it to, I would do want to go into this blind. I will keep this until I find the rest of them and then I will read them all. But for now, I just have the first one. And then the two chunky monkeys. The first one is The Dream Catcher. This is about four men who did something brave when they were younger. I don't know what that is. And now every single year they get together and they go on a hunting trip. But this time they go on this hunting trip and they encounter a man who is like stumbles out of the forest, disoriented. And I'm assuming he's not just drunk. There is more to the story than that. And lastly, I've never read a Stephen King book that he wrote in collaboration with someone else, but this is with Peter Straub and it is Black House. It follows the story of Ty Marshall, who is a 10 year old boy who has been abandoned by his friends. And as he's walking away, there is a crow that starts to speak to him. So he follows this crow and then it asks, will he be the next victim of the serial killer that is in this town? We will find out. Those are all the books that I've added to my TBR. It is getting heftier and heftier. If there are any of these books that you think I should prioritize that you really, really enjoyed, please let me know down below. I do also have a story graphic account, which I will link uh, down, down, downstairs. I will link down below as well. Storygraph now has a feature where you can buddy read with people. I haven't tried it out yet, but if you want to buddy read any of these books with me, let me know in the comments, um, on my Instagram, through Storygraph or whatever, and we can buddy read some of these books. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, Olive, thank you so much for the shout out. It really meant the world to me. Thank you all as well for stopping by, for subscribing, for commenting. I love comments. Every time I get a comment, it makes my entire day. I think that's my favorite part of YouTube is comments and just like interacting and stuff. I'm gonna go read some books. All right, bye guys.